Lovely, I've been enjoying Orthodox choral music, sacred choral music from the Orthodox religions, Russian Orthodox, Byzantium. Lovely work, it's um, <clears throat> contemplative, it's calming. It, it seems to have an effect on me that allows a degree of internalizing the mystery that we're part of. Rather than, there's a real distinction for me in externalizing the sense of what I like to call eternity, Religions love to call it God, and uh, well, they refer to eternity as well, but that kind of sense of continuity that we have, that what is referred to as consciousness, consciousness, not conscience, consciousness, which is everything, is not an aspect of existence as we experience it, calling it reality, you know, that sort of thing. Existence extends beyond reality. That's what I'm thinking. And this music has a, an ability to evoke that sense of internal connection. And I know religions have a tendency to project a deity, which is very convenient for the bastards to manipulate, but they can't do it when you're internalizing it. The idea, as Jesus said, one of the great quotes was, the kingdom of heaven is within, was a clear indicator that the way to understand and absorb the significance of this extended aspect of our existence is to be able to internalize something. And I think this music helps. Anyway, my commentary. I've been away from making comments because I'm not feeling very motivated. I'm becoming more animated again. And I've started some paintings. You can see in the background, I've begun some paintings. Um, I'm referring to them as fragments. I will develop, I believe I will develop this these paintings over the next months, maybe years, I don't know, but uh, I feel more animated lately. I'm still in the middle of my healing. Um, it's been about, uh, seriously, my healing is almost a year now. I mean, I my diagnosis was uh, February a year and a bit ago, um, but really I didn't, well, I sort of began quite quickly in terms of protocols and things, but it refined itself over a period of two, three months. So I would say about a year. I'm about a year into the protocols. And uh, uh, I've mentioned that uh, the system has refused to really deal with me in any significant, important way. By the way, anybody that thinks they're being helped by this medical system I, I, I'll, I'll grant you the idea of uh, traumas that occur in accidents that the medical bunch is uh, very adept at uh, stitching things together, but from a chronic point of view, they're completely, utterly, 100% useless. So uh, don't rush, in my opinion, rushing to the white coats to fix something that's chronic. Uh, the the, the uh, pivotal word here, fix or cure, is not part of the language, by intent, actually. I think this is all, the way the system is set up, people will say, well, it's overworked, it's stressed out, it's all of that. Um, of course it is, but by intent. I, I, I've decided that the people who are involved in the system have been educated, schooled, schooled, not educated, have been schooled to propagate um, an attitude that pervades they're what I see as degenerate, degenerate behavior. It's schooled into them. It's, it's like their brains MK ultra into this schooling of not helping, but hurting. 
ultimately. This is, I think, I, I'm seeing this personally, my personal peer, people. This is not like some academic reading books. I've been personally subjected to the abuses by the system, how they have attempted to manipulate me to feel a certain way, and it's extremely difficult to overcome that. I mean, I'm generally speaking not a weak person, but there are things in my background I deferred to authority. I deferred to authority as a default mechanism. This is how I was brought up. In Germany, I, schools and all those are deferred to authority. It's a, a continuous rung of higher-ups all the way through. So personal responsibility is never an issue. Uh, the Germanics, the Germanic races, have all been very regimented into their authoritarian structures, and we see where that got them. Um, but that's a whole other story. I'm saying that when it comes to our healing, we broke it, we fix it. This is my idea. And any help you can get along the way is a bonus. <laughs> it's not a given. Uh, so my illusion, uh, I no longer am deluded by... My thoughts are very clear on this. My inner self, the heart, is still subject to the vagaries of the bastards because it's so ingrained in me to be subservient to authority, but I'm doing the best I can with the uh, gorgeous music that reminds me of my inner world and not the external world that is trying to press and impose itself. And that, that first, uh, you know, I, I mentioned this neurologist in, uh, neurologist, urologist in Sarnia set me back easily six months in terms of my healing because he, in, he basically insisted on me being really sick. And there's uh, the only uh, way to overcome this, well, he never even said to overcome. He, he, he suggested treatments that were fundamentally uh, uh, contrary to my nature. I, I knew this. I mentioned this before. But he was a real motherfucker, prick, son of a bitch, who threatened me, basically. He threatened me. He threatened me. Uh, with my own demise and uh, this was because he couldn't get his way with me and I uh, I fired him I got rid of him here in Canada. You can Barely get replacements if you're looking I did I do have another urologist now. She's she's nice. She's nice, but she's the opposite to this Barbaric degenerate that I had she's completely disinterested, which is much better she appears appears not to have any interest in my well-being whatsoever, and she's very clear about it. She just has her procedures that she suggests, and I can take them or not take them. And she doesn't say, hey, I'm not going to talk to you if you don't take them. No, she hasn't done that, so at least that. Besides, uh, anything that she would suggest, I, I, couldn't, I would never accept. But my, my thought is, and I'm, I'm beginning to reverse my position on this somewhat as well, to have my foot in the door on diagnostics. But here we go again, the diagnostics, these uh, machines that supposedly tell you how you're doing uh, are problematic because in any system, what is understood to be systemic feedback, they will always find what they're looking for. So we need to be aware, this is very complex from the point of view that um, the power that we allow someone or something to have will ultimately feed back to us what we want to hear. So if I am intent on believing their uh, diagnoses, everything will point me in that direction. So my considerations now are not having anything to do with them whatsoever. Whenever I sense this, whether it's the dispassionate uh, urologist or the barbaric motherfucker who is threatening me, they're both in a way similar because they're looking for their hammers, looking for the nail. And if we s submit to that attitude idea, if we go along with it, we're very likely going to be afflicted with exactly what they say uh, that we are afflicted with. So uh, I obviously my, in my circumstance, I'm still dealing with this superstructure from way past when called authority, uh, which is something that most of us have ingrained in us 
very few. Uh, Larkin Rose seems to have eclipsed it in his anarchic position. And anarchy is not like uh, mayhem. Anarchy means personal responsibility. And I love that idea. And I like Larkin Rose a lot. Uh, worth listening to. His, his thoughts, ideas are uh, very apropos to anything to do with empowering ourselves. And especially when you're healing. Let's say if you have an affliction and you uh, are able like I feel I've been able to isolate the process and procedures or protocols that are going to really push me in the right direction. So coffee with shaga, medicinal mushroom, I think very important. Um, okay, so a quick update. Uh, I think I've mentioned some of this before. Um, the one thing I haven't said is the radical position I've taken in terms of my affliction is that um, when I was introduced to the possibility of being having a chronic illness, cancer, prostate cancer, I'm beginning to shift somewhat toward the idea that it was implanted in me, that I did have certain issues but this became prominent as I believed it. <laughs> I mean, people have talked about this. The Swami types always talk about, you know, the idea of mind over matter. Um, I mean, the real world is a puzzle in this sense because it imposes itself so obviously, but then the underlying reality, reality is not as it appears to be, as I say, is something we need to consider. So this conclusion or this sort of possibility that we actually, uh, in relation to sickness, if we get sick, it's because it's something that is coming from within us. Like, meaning it's, it's influenced people outside say, hey, you're really sick. And then you say, yeah, that's true. And that's, that's the nail in the coffin when you say that's true. And my instinct was uh, fundamentally, uh, I, I couldn't say it's not true, but I said, you fucker are never going to touch me because this is his game. It's kind of like that. Uh, uh, these people have an extreme need to inflict themselves in some way. It's like they delight in the misfortune of others, even though, even though they pretend with their white coats to have some sort of level of interest and care in your condition, but they don't. And this was very clear with this urologist in Sarnia, Ontario. He was, uh, that there are three of them, go and look them up. A uh, buddy of mine went to another one and he said he's no different. So each one of them is, I don't know about the third one, but two of them are identical uh, from the testimony of my buddy who's also got uh, some prostate issues. Uh, and he said, uh, Basically, they're, they're demons. He called them a demon for what it is that he wanted them to do. And uh, uh, he's, he's a very devout religious person. And he saw it in the context of, of uh, uh, demons. And I, I really like my conversation sometimes with uh, my friend on this because uh, he comes at it from a very uh, organized religious perspective in the sense of the Bible. I come at this from an internal perspective, much more, but I have an, uh, a very open conversation about our positions. Him in terms of primarily externalizing uh, the, the deity or that, that sort of mystery that I refer to, whereas I am uh, realizing it uh, as, a, as a powerful part of myself. I mean, uh, you can dance on a pin here because he would agree with me that it's a powerful part of himself, but there's always this sensibility about a God outside of him. So this is, this is problematic for me because uh, in this mystery, to, to create uh, thoughts and notions that are very redactive, that uh, the reason behind it is fundamentally a reality-based reason, not an existence in terms of eternity reason. There are 
there are ways of rationalizing things that are truly based in reality, and then there are ways of understanding something that is much more expansive, if you know what I mean. I hope that's... Yeah. Anyway, uh, just a brief update. Um, what I wanted to comment on today, and this is the title of the of this video, is I am thrilled about the Assange, um, the verdict the British courts have issued that they're not going to send him to the henchmen, to the dogs, to the hyenas in the U.S., the, the, the liars, the legal liars. They're, they're legally allowed to lie now in terms of their justice system. And the British, for whatever reason, they're part of the company, but they've said Assange has the right to appeal his extradition, which is a huge victory. And I want to applaud all the people that have been involved directly in his, in his effort to expose the bastards and to save him. They're trying to kill him. They're making an example of him. This is very obvious. They're trying to kill him. So anyone else having any ideas of countering the system or opposing the system, and all he was doing was showing people that governments are very nefarious in their activities and not on our behalf. They're doing it for other reasons, and they hated that. They hated being exposed, not, not because they were trying to save somebody, as they say, in terms of being damaged by the information, but they were being damaged by showing that they were not acting on our behalf. They were just renegades. They were just going through the China shop and breaking everything. And Assange pointed very clearly in millions of leaks, not just one, the uh, pivotal one, of course, is that uh, machine gunning, uh, helicopter machine guns, innocent people uh, as they're running away. And uh, this, this is the nature of the system. And as long as people go along with it, even you don't even have to protest on behalf of Assange, but if you just even entertain the idea that, well, we're good, basically, no, you're not. If you're going along with any version of the system that we're in, that is controlling and manipulating and ultimately destroying anything that's worthwhile in us, there is nothing in civilization that has shown me to be of value. You show me, you show me how the system called civilization has benefited uh, ordinary people. And, and don't say, well, it's produced great art. No, it hasn't. There are individuals that overcome that through their effort individually and influenced by their masters or swamis or whatever you want to call it. But that's got nothing to do with civilization. So my position is very straightforward. As Gandhi said, civilization would be a good idea. So there is nothing to, uh, to tie me to this system. And people say, well, you have conveniences, you use them. But those are things we do. We interact with each other. The fact that it's structured under a system doesn't make it work better. It just means that this is how it's been organized. And we need to look at the entire organization and say, what will work better for me and collectively? So my, I, I salute the people that have been standing with Assange, not just physically on the, uh, you know, on the pavement protesting, but also I have always had this, this, this mental commitment to a person like that. We need to have this, this inner fortitude to, to allow ourselves to think the right way through our conscience to say, this, this is wrong. This needs to be changed. And I think overall, the shift, the threshold will be met. The more people begin to really just even think about the possibility of having another kind of reality than what we're in, will begin to shift. And there is a lot of people always out there saying, oh, the sky is going to fall. Yeah, it's all going to change and the money is going to be rubbed out. And uh, the WEF guys are going to be uh, hanging off poles and all this kind of shit. 
Well, yeah, possibly like a Ceausescu moment, possibly. A lot of people are looking for looking for blood, but that never is the answer because the old boss and new boss get replaced with the same boss. So uh, whether or not the system that I so much, I abhor what is understood to be a working system called civilization. I have no, no affection whatsoever for it. There is nothing I've gotten out of it. Nothing. Zero. What I have gotten is my mentors, artists that taught me, people individually have given me something. And then I hopefully am able to pass that on. That's how I approach it. So we need to be very conscious in ourselves of generating thought, like I said about my own healing, like your healing, if you're going through that thought that implants itself, that the internalizing of this mystery that will actually affect us very deeply and in the real world, the physical world as well. And I'm many ways struggling with that because I have good days, bad days. I have doubts. Uh, I get, you know, I throw myself under the bus and pull myself out before the wheels uh, roll over me. And uh, uh, this is very important to, uh, to generate within our mind an attitude, thoughts that will push us toward this threshold of a community that will change the way things are. And uh, most people, uh, mindful people will admit things are so broken, they're terrible. Are they going to be broken to the point of collapsing? Well, the bastards are likely going to intervene. Uh, it won't be a collapse that uh, we think of in the sense, oh, they've completely now capitulated and they're collapsing. No, it'll be the collapse will be initiated by the bastards themselves because they want to take everybody else with them. That'll be how it works. And they say, well, we have enough bunkers or whatever their strategies are to survive. We have enough of our survival mechanisms in place that will will overcome whatever it is that we create. It's sort of like developing the atom bomb and actually using it and saying, oh, we'll have bunkers and we'll escape in them. Well, you're not going to escape in them. The bastards are going to lose big time if they initiate this uh, crash or this uh, bloodletting, as a lot of people are indicating. Again, I go to Cliff High, who does some phenomenal research on things, and he's convinced uh, his dates are always wrong. It's, it's, uh, it's troublesome. Like anybody that says, oh, it's going to happen by, by February or by May or by August or whatever, and it, you know, yeah, maybe. But uh, he's convinced by June uh, things are going to be really rotten on the uh, dollar. It may be. It may be. And he sees the connection of the collapse of the petrodollar to the system collapsing. But I still think that is by intent as well. This is where the bastards intervene. They say, yeah, let's kiss the dollar. What everybody relies on, kiss goodbye. There is no value in people's lives anymore in terms of their assets or savings. The only asset and saving is your, well, that you have is your community and the strength within yourself. That's all that's left in terms of an asset. And uh, the transition, whatever that might look like, is if there are enough people that have the internal assets in place and their community in place, this is how society may actually benefit. You know, it may actually be an improved version of ourselves. I'm hoping. We certainly can improve it. Right. All right. I think I'll leave it there. Uh, I've I've been under the radar because, you know, like I say, I have. Uh, I it's a good day, bad day, roller coaster sometime, and uh, uh, it's something that I'm dealing with, and uh, I have more good days and bad days now, which is good. I think. Yeah, I think so. All right. I, I'll leave it there. And uh, I'll see if I'll post it on both BitChute and YouTube, definitely YouTube. And uh, we'll see how my, my own healing progresses, even in terms of being able to make a painting again. Oh, I'll, I'll just end here. I, I was asked about this, you know, in terms of uh, uh, a buddy of mine had a birthday and I talked to him and um, I mentioned that I was working again. And uh, the topic of uh, some of our friends 
when they were afflicted with some illness. Uh, a, a very good friend of mine, an older artist, he died, had, uh, got, had a heart attack and he was in a hospital six weeks or something. And during that time, he drew like a madman. He drew everything. He like documented it in his, uh, in his sketchbook and stuff. I just couldn't do that. I'm unable, unless I'm 100% focused, on what it is that I'm doing on that paint wall back there, or in any other version of what I do, I'm unable to produce anything or feel within myself the necessity, as Kandinsky said, it's art is a necessity. And if you don't feel it, uh, in my case anyway, I said I'm unable to do anything. And I haven't painted for a whole year. I haven't touched a brush in a whole year. I did a short series that I called Pro Proctoxicology as in uh, prostate toxicology. I did five paintings, and that was, I think, maybe, uh, oh, that might have been a year ago. Yeah, May, sometime in May of last year. And uh, uh, since then, uh, literally, I've not been able to touch a brush. But um, I have been at the studio most, most of the time, if I'm not doing treatments or whatever, I have been here and working on uh, building stretchers, stretching paintings that I really like, uh, creating frames. Um, I'm involved. Uh, I have quite a number of pieces come up in auction. A friend of mine has uh, initiated uh, uh, a program of getting a higher profile because I don't have a gallery, a representative right now. Uh, he's actually decided to push me into auctions and he's selling some of the paintings. And some of them are his, some of them are mine. Uh, and there have been results. So uh, this is also an activity that has been important in terms of uh, keeping my name in the public domain. Uh, so anyway, yeah, uh, I, will, I will see where these paintings go. I call them fragments. Uh, and just as a quick note, the fragments are literally... Uh, you know how I, people who've been following me realize or understand that I use art history as a springboard. I, I go off, I riff uh, like a cover song. I riff off art history and apply it to my own process of working. And in this case, uh, since I've been so fragmented, fragmented in the last uh, year and some, I have decided to make fragment paintings and taking uh, segments out of uh, well-known works. The one behind me is based on a Jericho painting called Raft of the Medus, a magnificent painting. And Jericho was uh, very young when he died. I think TB maybe, something like that, consumption. Uh, something that happened quite, quite often in the old days. Uh, they didn't have antibiotics. Uh, as far as I know, and I've been damaged, actually. I've been damaged by antibiotics. I, I have what is understood to be cipro-neuropathy. The white coats won't admit to it. My naturopath has said, yeah, you definitely have cipro-neuropathy, which was something that happened to me when I had uh, uh, an encounter with the white coats, who, who saved my ass uh, in one way, but then created a problem another way. This always seems to happen. So anyway, on, in terms of the paintings, uh, I have uh, decided, decided, or my impulse has resurfaced to put paint on a canvas and using the idea of fragmentation, which is something I'm experiencing, have been experiencing, and I'm representing it, or I guess it's a metaphor, uh, the idea of painting fragments from magnificent paintings. Uh, maybe an allusion to uh, my own magnificence. <laughs> anyway, it's uh, uh, the process is my process. It's uh, there is some complexity within how I make the painting that makes it look a certain way. And uh, when people see it real life, I think they'll appreciate the uh, the nature of the complexity because it's very difficult to uh, to figure out how I did it. Uh, which is part of it. I mean, you want to maintain a certain mystery, although if you look at my YouTubes, you can go through it. I show how I uh, do some of the things, not all of it, but some of the things. So we'll see where this goes, and uh, I, I will keep you updated. 
uh, not as often as I used to, but uh, uh, I wish everybody the best and uh, internalize internalize the most important aspects of our experiences need to be internalized. So if we have a religious bent, stop projecting it out, bring it within. I think this is uh, the way to go. Uh, even if if I would see you like my friend, a very very biblically oriented person with the facts in the Bible, still make that effort to internalize those facts as they relate to your own life. You know, whatever it is, like Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is within. You read that in the Bible, what the hell do you make of that? How can you actually project a deity in any form outside of yourself? You see, th this is problematic and it was problematic for my friend. And and he, he kind of flips back a little bit every now and then into trying to avoid that, but he can't now. I put the worm in his head. I think he can't avoid it. So it, it's, it's yeah, I think this is a very important aspect to understanding ourselves, to be able to internalize and then let that power emanate from within, whether it's in terms of our understanding, the eternity that, or the, ex, the existence that includes eternity, how we're part of that, or even in the real world, to affect our ability to change our life in the real world in terms of illness, in my case, or in any other way that you want to change the world that you live in. It needs to come from within. All right, that's it. That's it. All the best.